a stroke. It was all internalized. I couldn't speak anything. Keats called it the spirit that is of no tone. When Paul had his stroke, I was on a book tour for a book called An Alchemy of Mind. The subtitle is The Marvel and Mystery of the Brain. I knew in terrifying detail what had happened in his brain. At first, I was frightened of revisiting the early days after Paul's stroke because it was extremely traumatic for me. According to an old adage, the secret to a good marriage is communication. How do you manage that when your loved one has lost most of his language? The only remnant of language he had was the one solitary syllable, mem. Mem, 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 mem. He groaned it, he whispered it, he uttered it civilly as a greeting, he barked it in anger, he solicited help with it, and finally, in frustration, when none of that worked, he sat upright in bed and spat it out as a curse. I was almost resigned to being a physic forever. Silent forever, yeah. When my goddess came along, yeah. As he struggled to improve, I tried to help him retrain his brain to perform one of its oldest and sweetest magic tricks, language. Thank God for language. An emergency room doctor, looking at a CAT scan of Paul's brain, thought it belonged to the brain of someone who might be in a vegetative state. Far from it, I said. In fact, if anything, I think he may be the happiest that I've ever known him to be. The doctor was absolutely astonished and said, I'm so glad you told me that. It's really important to know what's possible. She's a marvel. Absolute marvel. Yeah.